Hey, we're back checking out tutorial level three in the uh, Pico CTF challenge here. This one is called Color, apparently. You can go see it on the left-hand side of the desktop here. Click that Open Me icon, and we get that challenge prompt. So, here we go. Challenge title, just tutorial three. Challenge prompt is, Robin handed me some color codes the other day. They don't look like anything to me, though. Can you help me find her favorite shade of red? So the hints here, again, probably tools on the internet that can help. And that's a clear theme you'll hear from all of the Capture the Flag competitions that you do. Search engines are your friend. You've got to learn to Google. You've got to learn to keep trying. That's Kali Linux Offensive Security's motto. Try harder. Keep trying. Research things and try and learn on your own. So let's see what we have. Click on that codes link and we get a new text file. Here are a few of my favorite things. So <laughs> these look weird, right? These clearly aren't colors. They just look like numbers and letters. Um, so let's, let's let's Google. Let's just see what one of these things is. Um, if we just paste it in here, do we get anything? Oh, okay. So the first couple results here are color hex. Color hex. Uh, let's try it. Hmm, this looks like something. Whatever. Looks like kind of a brownish, maybe, uh, yeah, pretty much brown. Just maybe a dark orange. Um, 7A3B00. Color RGB value is 122590. What does that mean? So, this is a hexadecimal representation of a color or something that you see on your computer. So, it's made up of those three numbers that are either determined in red, green, or blue. That's why they call it RGB. And these values are represented in different ways. Normally we see them as regular numbers, or regular numbers from what we understand, in that they are in decimal. They're in base 10, like 0 for no value, 59 in green, and 122 for red. But there's another representation, or another way we can understand and perceive these numbers. That's not base 10, not in decimal, but instead in hex. And hex is base 16. So that counts from 0 to 0 to 15. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. until you hit 15. Our decimal counting system is base 10. It goes from 0 to 9, and then it resets at 10, right? You get another digit. So when we say 16, or base 16, going 0 to 15 is really weird, right? Because you can't have a 15 or an 11 just hanging out as its own number beside other numbers like we can in decimal. So that's why you see those values like A and B, because rather than counting 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we represent them as A through F. Hex. Let's see if I can Google any other representations of hexadecimal numbers. because I can give you this explanation, but until you see it, maybe it just won't click in your mind. So here's a chart, right? X, this looks like a multiplication table. <laughs> kind of. Huh. I guess that's just addition here? No, I don't know. That's not what I want to look at. Let's look at this chart. This isn't really the best background, so I hope you can ignore this checkers here that's transparent, but you'll see decimal in the middle column here. That 10 is represented by A because we ran out of a single character or, or a single digit, so, so to speak, that we can use to represent that. So A, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 D, etc. And that is base 16, or 0 to 15. That's how we show it. And that is just a single um, value. Because when we look at things like RGB, those values are put together in those triplets, red, green, and blue. I want to switch to this page. Thank you. <laughs> that 7a is one byte. That is a binary or a number from 0 to 255, and you can that will fill out up to 255 in decimal, or go all the way to FF, the notation in hex for 255. 0 is just straight up zero. There's no value there. There's nothing there. So there's no blue in this color brown that we're looking at right now. So let's go ahead and try some other colors. If I paste these into this website, looks like 
Did I copy the exact same color? Oh, it didn't copy to begin with. Classic. Okay, so this is a little bit of purple mish, maybe. Um, try the next one. We can keep exploring these if we really want to, but we can kind of do some deductive reasoning here. We know that these are in pairs of red, green, and blue. So the zeros mean no presence of color, but higher numbers all the way to FF and being 15 and 15, right, in hex, that means there's more of that color. So C7 over here in the red means that there's a lot of red, but 00, zero and 02 zero mean there's practically nothing, nothing for sure in green and only 02 zero in blue. So this must be a good red color. Let's check it out. If I get over to that page, paste that in, you can see, okay, this is basically strong red. And it says that here in this description. This is a hex color that's mainly red. So let's go ahead and try that as our flag, because they're asking for a good shade of red, right? Submit flag, paste it in, submit, and cool, we've got it. So that's it. That is how you represent colors in hexadecimal. And that's a little bit of the behind the scenes of looking at that data and those numbers in your computer system. It's not always the 0 through 9 that we're used to, but we can instead move on to 0 through six, zero, 0 through 15 in a base 16 number system. So you'll see that all the time because computers like things in binary. They like it in a 0 and a 1. But you've heard stuff like 8-bit computers or 16-bit, 32-bit, etc. So those bits are a 0 or a 1, and then you get maybe pairs of them or 8 of them. You get 8 bits, you get a 0 four times maybe, and then a, f a 1 four times maybe. That's a byte. And you can represent that in base 16 as those two letters like 7A or like C3 like we had seen in some of those other colors. So that's it. That's how you can represent a color by using bytes in an RGB color value. Red, green, and blue. Sweet. So now we're moving on. Now we're done with the tutorial, and we can jump into the real Pico CTF, get into some real Capture the Flag challenges, and jump into some cool stuff. Let's learn a lot of cool stuff, and let's get better at cybersecurity, get in the Capture the Flag scene, and maybe be elite hacker. <laughs> All right, so we're jumping in. I'm going to go ahead and skip this so it will show us uh, the game board here, and I can explain more about this in the next video. But hey, before I go, I do need to give a little bit of a shout-out to the people that are supporting me. Thank you, Spencer Clark, Gal Horowitz, Suzuki Attila, and Orgoloth, the Unruly Destroyer of Words, Bastion of Terror. Um, one dollar or more on Patreon can give you a little shout out just like this at the end of the video in every video and five dollars or more a month will give you early access to the content that I release on YouTube as soon as it's ready not when YouTube wants to upload it because I'd like to do daily gradual releases hey if you did like this video please plus that press that like button man I did it again <laughs> uh, maybe leave me a comment let me know what you think what else you'd like to see what else we can do better at and if you're willing to subscribe and if you really want to help me out check me out on Patreon see you guys soon